All right, so when it comes to track walks, usually I start on the straight because it's kind of where the straight, it's, it's a fixed thing. Um, you're carrying the most speed and you can kind of build the track from that there. A couple of things you can learn from track walks. Firstly, get down on, get down on the track and actually feel the surface. Um, you'll feel some surfaces, like obviously here at the moment, yeah, there's a bit of loose stuff on the surface, especially in these dips. When you look from here, you can actually see that there's a, there's a clear line where there's more dust and less dust. Um, it's not always as easy to see this kind of stuff from the driver's stand. Even the line itself might look like a line, but it's not there. Uh, I know that our home track at Keelor, it can get, can get a look where it looks like it's got grip across the whole line, but when you get right down, there's, there's a section of right on the inside that's got virtually no dust, and there's another section just outside that that's got just like a little powdery stuff. So get down, have a feel of the track. Yeah, as I say, from here we can see this track's got a little bit of a, a, a camber on here. And um, so if any of you have been coming on the outside and feeling like the car's drifting a little bit, that's because this, this, this little bit of camber on the outside, especially with a little bit of dust here, uh, is going to be doing that. So that's where, from here, probably you, you want to be aiming for about here to be the most outboard that you're going to be on the straight. And if you're right on the outside, you might need to just bring the car back in a little bit before you can get back on the power. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting it all the way down the, down the straight. It's my favourite one on the um, <laughs> End of the straight, yeah, it's a fast sweeper. Um, the kind of things you look for from a track, track walk is like, are there any bumps or ruts? This surface is pretty good coming in here. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a rope, not a curb, so we need to be a little bit careful not to hit this too much. Like I said in my talk, fast, a fast section. You don't need to back off so much, but you do need to be very smooth with your steering. So this is, this is a corner on this track to really focus on not using too much steering. Too much steering and you, what you're going to find is the car starts to catch these ruts. It'll get unstable, it'll feel like it has no steering but then suddenly spins out on you. The less steering you can use, especially in stock, it'll let you carry corner speed as well. Every time you've got big lock, your front tires, you're actually making them act like a skid and they're, they're washing off speed. Again, you watch the really quick stock guys. If you guys saw uh, Lachlan Donnelly here last year, you see he's got awesome corner speed. He uses very little lock and just kind of lets the car flow through the corners. That's the kind of uh, thing that you've got to always keep in mind. From here, another thing that's not so obvious from the stand, you can see that the track drops away a little bit. So I've seen a lot of cars through here kind of push out wide. Actually, as you're coming through the exit of this corner, when the, when the track drops away, your tyres are going to be coming off the ground a little bit. So you're not going to have as much grip. So you need to keep this in mind that you can't lean on the car as much through here. But once you get into the base here, from about, from about here, you're actually going to have good steering in. Has anyone felt their car's kind of understeering to here, then steers well into that? Yeah. Just this, because you're going fast, even these little chips, they're enough to really change the way that the tyres load up, and that changes your grip. Again, if you can be thinking about that before the car does it, you can actually drive further, right? That's why I did it. Sorry? That's why I did it. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good feature. <laughs> Uh, this is yeah, also another pretty fast corner, but the main point with this corner is you've got the jump straight after here. Now, these jumps, we've got a right-hand corner after it. We don't want to be coming out too wide. We've got to kind of piece everything together. You want to be coming out, we on the generally on either the middle to the right-hand third of the jump. So when you're coming out of a corner like this, it's really important. Um, if there was no jump there, you'd probably attack this corner a bit harder. But as we talked before, our tyres can't do everything at once. So if we're trying to attack this corner harder and make the tyres work more, we're not going to be able to straighten the car up and get on the power as early. So sometimes on a corner like this, it's better to just be a little bit smoother through the middle of the corner, let it get a little bit further around the corner and straightened up, and then you can really get on the power. And then that means you can, you'll actually carry a lot more speed straight towards the jump. If you hit a jump sliding, you're going to crash. If you'll hit the jump not straight, you're going to fly off, right? So try to try to think, yeah, where, where can I be getting the most out of my car and my tyres? This is one where a little bit of patience, let the car coming around the corner a little bit further, then you can really accelerate hard. Again, if there, was, if there wasn't a jump there, I reckon you'd probably be attacking this corner more, and we see that the line would be coming out a bit wider. But because we've got a clearer jump, it's better to just be a little bit more patient before we get on the throttle, let the car finish the corner a little bit more, and then we can really attack it. And then hold a full speed until you get some jump. Um, in two-wheel drive, with no with no wind today, we're clearing them pretty easily. But um, if you let the throttle on past about here, you'll find that the car does a big nose up. So that's that's where, again, because we're hitting it really fast, your car's, what you're going to see is the car kind of wax into this point here, and then it's actually starting to lift off from about here. If you, if you did a super slow-mo, the tyres are probably not even on the ground until about, from about here to here, they're hardly touching. So if you leave the throttle on too long, that's when you find that the car does that last minute nose up, and then you, you start doing a big nose high the whole time. Well, there, is, there is a corner straight after it, so, and there, there's a double in there. Generally,
normally with jumps, we want to be hitting them perpendicular. Um, if you come through here and jump at an angle, the car's going to jump at a bit of a strange angle, so we want to give the car, you know, it's kind of focusing through here to, let, to get the car taking off as straight as possible. Again, because there's a tight corner after it, I find through here, it's become a bit wider, steer it, just give it a little bit of a flick to the left, it's starting to aim in, it gives you that little bit of um, direction back in towards this corner and lets you take your tight line here. This is a tight corner. Uh, in two-wheel drive, one of the techniques you can use is to actually, in a tight corner, give the brakes a bit of a whack part way through. And you're kind of utilising that friction circle. You, when you hit the brakes, you've taken away the cornering grip and the car will rotate very, very quickly. So if you've got an understeering two-wheel drive, the more you use the brakes, the more the car's going to steer. But then, in a high-speed corner, that makes them really unstable. But in a low-speed corner like this, again, you'll see some cars look like they just suddenly rip through the corner and take off. There's a really good technique in two-wheel. You come into the corner, you slide down, you just tap the brakes mid-corner, the car will, the back will flick out like doing a handbrake turn, and then you, when you when you let off the brake, the rip comes back again, and then you can punch out. Can you get away with that by doing drag brake? Does that have the same effect? Drag brake kind of does that, it, it, it makes it very smooth and gradual, yeah. Smooth, That's yeah. why I run a little bit, because it always helps a little bit, but then even then, if my car's pushing a touch, you just whack the brake, and you don't, you don't hold it on for long, it's just enough to get it to flick around, and then you can practice that timing of like getting back on the power. It's and just a weight transfer, isn't it, to the front of it? It's, well, it's not just that, it's because you're, with that friction circle we were talking before, when you use the brakes, you're, you're trying to, you, you, your tyre can't brake and corner and everything at the same time. So you, you basically force it to take grip away by trying to make it brake more. So you're actually taking the side grip away from the tyre, and then the tyre will slide. But then when you let off the brake, it gives it grip again. So, yeah. Um, yeah, through here you've got a very fast section leading from here, so the priority is to get the car straightened up. Our car's accelerating really well on a straight line. So the, the earlier you can get it straightened up, especially our two-wheel drive, if you can if you can rotate it through here. So you're basically you want to exit corners kind of here. Uh, when I when I put cones out for a, for a, if this was a, a cone day, I put the cone here. So I don't care what you do there, but I want you to be exiting here. Right? When you exit there, the track's got exit grip. You've got the straightest line for the next corner, and your car you'll be able to get back on the power and build up the speed. So really focus on getting the car straightened up quickly. That, get, that lets you get back on the power as quick as possible. Um, again, probably stock, you can probably be a little bit less of, uh, you know, you need to carry a bit more corner speed. Mod, we've got so much power that if you're cornering too much and you have to delay to get on the power, you've just lost some lap time. So then through here, yeah, really fast section. Same thing, trying to be very um, smooth on, you know, this is where we can really practice getting the power down hard without too much wheel spin, but getting the car as straight as possible. Got a curve, so you don't want to hit that one. It's going to work really um, And then this next, this next corner is a fast corner, so you don't need too much lock, but it's a tightening corner. So the more we get through the corner, the more the corner tightens up, and we're coming into a jump. So again, on this, you probably you, you generally focus on entering it a bit faster, and then washing the speed off as you come through, because you don't want to be you don't want to be wide in this corner, especially around here. So if you come in from a slightly wider exit, you can carry a lot of speed into it but then focus on, as you, as you go more through a, a tightening corner, your car will go slower and you can use more and more lock. So remember we talked before, fast corners, less lock, slow corners, tight lock. So with a corner like this, the more you come through the corner, the more steering lock you start to use. And then you want to be, you don't want to be too wide on this because there's a corner straight after it. If you come out wide, A, you can see we're going to get out into the loose. We've also just made our corner very long. And because we're leaving a jump, if we, if we leave at the wrong angle here, we're going to end up out here, and we've just made that corner really long. So that's why when you're going to jump just before a corner, you, you basically want to be pointing at the entrance to the corner as early as possible. So straight as you can over the jump here. Again, this is another corner where you can use that brake to flick the car around. We've got another hairpin straight after, so generally in here, you're almost driving straight at the next corner. Um, this next section is actually probably the, one of the best lap time parts for track you've got jumps through corners. So, I feel pretty happy with that one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Very but technical. What, what, what you want to look at with this is that you don't want to be taking off from a jump uh, sideways where possible. You generally want to be leaving at 90 degrees to the face, if you can. Um, so in this case, if we take a really tight line here, generally what we're, we're forcing ourselves to have, we're going to come across this jump at a little bit of an angle. So I think on this kind of one, it's better to step out to about where Travis is. 
And then we can line the we can line the uh, the jump up. We're hitting the jump perpendicular, and it's lining us up to this next section of corners. Um, again, you can't steer when you're in the air. So this is actually, if you looked at this, like if you put a if you had a drone watching from above, this isn't actually a corner. This is a corner, and then a little straight, and then a corner, and then a little straight. Your car's going straight between the jumps. So you've got to make sure that you're pointed where you want to land. So the more you, if you come out just a bit wider here, you basically, while well, you're going straight over the jump, you're lined up properly. This is a really easy one. You can feel if you get the takeoff wrong, no matter what you do, you end up out here. And that's because whenever you're in the air, your car's going straight, right? So. Um, in terms of technique over these two, Anytime you're between jumps, you hear about hustling. I don't know if you've ever heard that in, in any kind of racing. They talk about it in Formula cars and supercars and stuff as well. If you're ever at a part of the track where you're not cornering, you're not accelerating, and you're not putting any power down, you've got to ask yourself, what am I doing? Why am I trying not to hustle my car? Why am I trying not to get some speed out of this car? Why am I kind of... You shouldn't be relaxed anywhere on a track. If you're relaxed, it means your car's not working as hard. So through sections like this, between the jumps, try to kind of build up the speed. You can't, as soon as the car lands on the power, straighten it back up. If you've lined the car up properly, you can use a lot of speed between jumps. If you haven't lined the car up, that's when you've got to kind of fight it back. So if you can line up from that jump there, you can then punch to here and then kind of back off and then land again here. You've just made some time up between that section. Um, when you have jumps like this, you can't clear anything. There's not a lot of advantage from getting a lot of air off this jump. If you can, the earlier you can get the tyres back on the ground, the straighter you're going to be. So typically with these sort of humps, I try to try not to get much air, but I focus on getting the car straightened up so that as soon as it lands, you can punch the car. If you're pointed out here when you land, you're going to have to turn again before you straighten up, so you've just lost some time. So you try to focus as much as you can on here as getting the car straight as, as early as possible. This particular track, you can actually run pretty close to this pipe here. Um, yeah, if, you, if you're pointed this way, you're not going to be able to get on the tower because it's just going to shoot you off. So always be trying to point the car to the next section as quick as possible. You get a lot of lap time. And also, we're coming through here. So this is where, again, we're thinking about what's happening with the, top, the grip of the tire. We're coming off a hump. Over the hump, how much grip are we going to have? Basically nothing, right? So if you try to, if you, if you, as you come over the hump, if you try to go full throttle, you're just going to spin out. So as you come over the hump, let off the power. As soon as the car's going back down the hump, that's when you can really get on the power, and you've got a lot of grip until you, uh, where the camera is here, um, over that, that next hump. As you come over that, you're going to lose grip again. The car's going to get light. Um, you can kind of react to that, but if you're thinking about it, you're going to react faster. So straighten it up through here, but as the car comes over here, yeah, from about here to here, you're not going to have that much grip because you, your car's light. If you're going to try and turn the car here, you're probably going to spin out or traction roll. So whenever you've got a hump like this, you try to aim the car as quick as you can. Aim it to where you want to go, keep the steering as straight as possible. If you can come through here with almost no steering, your car's going to go really fast through that section in a straight line. If you're trying to turn, that's usually where you end up either spinning out or rolling over. So look at the track and decide whether you're going to hit it hard straight or whether you're going to try to kind of use the steering. Uh, got to transition the surface halfway through this corner, which makes it tricky, especially with pins on the front of a four-wheel. So a carpet, a carpet surface, especially a pin tire, is going to grip much more aggressively. So you, you can't use full lock. I, I've certainly found on this full lock here, I just traction roll as soon as I see it. So, when you get onto a different surface, that's when you've got to be ready for using a bit less lock, especially in the four wheel. Um, this next section, again, we've got to kind of work out what's the, the, the quickest overall way. Basically, usually when it's a, when there's a there's a combination section like this, I start from the back and work my way. Sorry, start from the end, work my way backwards. What do we want to do? We want to be stepping up onto the straight to get the best line down on the straight. That's our that's where we're going to get our lap time. How do we work back from there? If we take too much air off this tabletop, we're probably just going to smack into the, the face there. So the, the trick for this is getting the right speed and line over this tabletop that we're lined up to get a good line onto the straight. So generally for this kind of one, uh, from what it feels like here, is you don't want to get any air off this. If you're getting air, you, you're losing time. Um, so nice and tight, punch down between it. Again, keep your tyres on the ground. 
don't clear the tabletop by too much. Ties are back on the ground, you can re-accelerate up onto that step there. Um, the line, if you, if you stick yourself down the inside, you've just made that next corner really, really tight. So you actually, I think the ideal way through here is to be as tight as possible here, and then kind of aim the car out over this jump. And then at least you've got a little bit more of an opening onto the next corner. Um, when you're stepping up. Uh, again, the question was asked before how to approach this. With a jump like this, the longer you leave the throttle on, the further you're going to go. If you leave the throttle, if you back off the throttle really early, you might find the car kind of instead of jumping, smacks into here. Um, if you leave the throttle on too long, you're going to launch too far. So you've got to really balance that there and, and, and a lot of these things depend on the setup of your car as well. If your car's very soft, it'll be very sensitive to that. If it's very stiff, not as much. And because we're landing onto a onto a jump onto a corner, so we've got a lot of a bit of traction here because it's carpet. But especially with the pins, if we land steering, we're gonna roll. So you've got to really focus yourself to land and whatever you wherever you line up from where Jeff is there, whatever your line is here you've committed to it. So you better get that line right. Whatever you, what, if you've got the wrong line and you're heading towards these here, there's no point trying to steer in the air, you're, you're gone. So, so focus on your line as you take off. Um, this one's really, this is probably the hardest part of the track. I'm certainly finding it the hardest bit. But yeah, try to focus on that, getting how, how you can work the sections before it to get the line. Sometimes if you've got the wrong line here, that doesn't mean you've got the wrong line here. It means you've taken the wrong line two corners back, all right? So, if, you, if you're having a problem with the section, work yourself back a couple of corners and see if there's a different way you can attack it. If you can come out of that last corner, swing out a bit wider, come through here, you've just opened up a much, much wider corner. If you're right on the inside where Jess is there, you've made this corner very tight and very narrow and you've made life a lot harder for yourself. So try to, try to work corners backwards, I guess. And then from here, we're going down a straight. Again, we want to get the power on as quick as possible. Um, yeah, you've got to basically judge two things. You can either launch off one of these and get your power, or you can use the, the downslope from there. Um, I encourage you to try a couple of different things. Key thing is if you do launch it while you're in the air, don't hold it fully pinned, because that's when usually you've got a car that does a, a big uh, wheel stand. If you can come off here and launch it, but then just as the car is about to hit the ground, then pin it, you'll find that the car's gonna really rock it forward. So um, as the car lands, you get lots of grip, punch the car forward. When you're in the air, don't try to use too much throttle. You, you, can't, you can't achieve anything. Also, from these sort of ones, is you try to, if you're in the air and you try to steer and you land, that's also when you usually either spin out or traction roll. So basically, in the air, be really focused on as the car lands, keep the wheels straight and get the power back on just as it lands, and you'll get a lot of lap time from that. If you've gone too fast up over here, yep. you just like, if you land, as long as you land straight and then you brake, is that yep. basically a slow corner at that point? Then that's, yeah. Around. Yep. If you yeah, yeah, and that's it. Sometimes you've just got to accept I stuffed that up, right? If you've gone too fast and you're out there and you try and fight the car back, that's usually when you have a problem. So that's when you've got to say, well, and that's when you get frustrated with yourself, you tend not to reflect. The best thing is if you have a problem, and, and you'll see me probably be a little bit uh, when Lockie's out on the track, if he, and I encourage the same thing in practice, if you crash in practice, stop. Work out why you did it and go back and do that again. Um, if you don't, Think, if you're not constantly thinking, what did I just do and how can I do it better, you're not actually going to get any faster. But in that case, if, yeah, if you've overshot it, um, sometimes, yeah, the best thing is don't, don't try and fight it, just, okay, I've overshot it. Land it, get it square, turn it, and then go. As the car lands, because like the, the cars, you know, if you watch them in slow motion, a car lands off a jump, the suspension compresses and extends. At that point of extension, if you're turning, generally what happens is the car rolls over. So at the point of compression, you've got good traction, but as it springs up and you try to turn, you roll. So you've kind of got to let it settle and then change. If it's a track where that happens every single lap, then that's when you can start to play with setup. You will find that if you've got a stiffer spring package, the car will settle quicker and you can turn quicker. Um, a soft spring, generally you need to leave that little bit of extra time for it to, to react. So generally when it comes to setup, my advice is don't change setup until you're certain that it's actually a setup problem and that it's not going to completely destroy everything else on the track but if it is something that's really holding you up and you go no matter what i do every single lap i'm having to count for this that's when setup changes start to make a big difference um i guess that, yeah having done a track walk is there anything new that anyone's seen that they haven't 
done this? Has, has everyone actually done a track walk here before? Like walk around? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's good if everyone has here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but you can see that you can you can spend a lot of time doing it. Like when we're at the Worlds, the guys are out there for a couple of hours doing this stuff, and they're videoing it, and you know you can start to think about it. Especially if you're at a track where you get very little practice, the more that you look at on the track walk, and again, you, you're always just trying to look for where can I put the power down? Where is a good line? Is there, you know, maybe maybe on roads a tiny little bit different because there's not such a variation across the surface, but in off road, you know there are. The ideal line isn't always the fastest because of the jumps. It's not always, doesn't always have to be the best grip. There might be a big hole there or a bump. So always look out for all those things to say, well, how can I maximise where I'm on power as much as possible, carrying as much speed, keeping my tyres on the ground, all those sort of things. They think most grip, best lap time. One question. Yes, my corner. Do you, um, do you, so you generally, all the time, you're squeezing the throttle. And yeah. You never usually pulse. Like the throttle, yeah. you're always pulsing in, in in electric. The cars are so reactive. Generally, pulsing what it does is it, it wheel spins, which means you lose grip, and then you back off and you gain grip. And all you're doing is kind of you're not you're not getting grip out of the car. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I'm not very experienced with nitro, but I understand a lot of that because there's a clutch there. You've got to keep the yeah, we do it it's, you've got to keep it into yeah. its torque band, right? So it's a little bit of a different strategy. But electric, we've got all the torque down low. So whatever you do with your throttle, it's instantly transferred. Yeah. Um, one of the things I didn't talk about is that with electric motor though, the torque is much stronger at low RPM. So like in nitro, you get up on the pipe and you've got your, your RPM higher. The, the higher the RPM of an electric motor, generally the, the less torque it gets. So the faster you're going, the more aggressive you can be with the throttle. At low speed is when you've got to be very, very progressive with the throttle. Um, so, and you, you'll, you'll feel that with braking as well. Braking is a lot stronger at high speed than so at high speed braking you actually have to be smooth, whereas at low speed you can be really aggressive. So that's because of the the, the way that electric motors work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the, the pulsing, I basically um, yeah, I, I, I don't nitro recommend finger. pulsing in, in, in electric. <laughs> um, they've just got way too much initial response to do that. You, but but the main thing is that kind of that squeezing where you don't just hold the throttle and you don't you don't you don't smash it and you don't. You know, you baby it. You, you're kind of forceful with it, but you're always ramping it up. So it's like you're always squeezing harder and harder. That's that's the trick. And generally keeping it at the same point. Yeah. yeah. When you keep it at the same point, it's either like if you're cruising through a, a high-speed sweeper and you're trying to stabilise a car. Like I said, if there's ever a point on the track where you're not turning and you're not accelerating or you're not braking, you've got to ask yourself, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. We're driving race cars. We're trying to get lap time. You've got to hustle these things, right? Like if you're, uh, but but if you if you're hustling a little bit too much. That's when you can start to think, oh, my tyre's got no grip. What you're doing is your style is taking away the grip. So, yeah. I'll, in, I'll, I'll get the car in okay. a second. We'll do a couple of demos of that kind of squeezing technique. Yeah. In stock. Yep. We drive stock with the Artmic motor now because we're down on, on, on power, but we've got a, a lot more bottom end. Yep. I noticed that when Lockham Donnie was racing in the last eight, so we're going, we know through the, we we'll get towards the end of the five minutes, we were we'll doing actually wider, going wider, so yep. to try and say so less braking, you have to try and keep up momentum. That, that's it. If you've got a corner, um, and you, it's one difference between modern stock. The tighter the corner, the slower you go, and the less time you're in the corner, but it means you've got to re-accelerate harder. If you take a, a, a wider racing line, um, or like a you know more of an on-road type racing line, you actually make the corner longer, but you are carrying more speed. So if you don't have acceleration, you're better off. The, the, the slower your motor, the more that you take like a flowing racing line. The more the more power your motor's got, the tighter the line you take, because you want to be able to use that power in a straight line. Yep. So yeah, if you've ever got a feeling where your car feels like it's underpowered, try to flow the, the line a bit more. Use less lock. Take like a wider, you know, really make a racing line out of the track. Um, yeah, the complete opposite end when you've got heaps and heaps of power is you can almost point and shoot in your tracks. With our rear motors, we used to point and shoot them. With the mid motor, that's forced us to take more of a racing line, um, and that gets a quicker lap time. Because the momentum takes, for whatever momentum you lose, it can take you twice as much to get back up again, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. And the rear motors look great because they were like super fast brake and then turn and accelerate, but you're losing so much time by not carrying the corner speed that we found that the mid motors are getting better lap times because of that. And in stock, it's the same thing. The more you can flow the car. So that's why stock seems to be more receptive to the lay downs and things because they really give you a lot of corner speed. And if you've got, you don't have as much power to get that wheel spin out of the corner. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's, that's definitely true.
still, I mean, you should always try to be as close as possible in the middle of the Oh, corner, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you can kind of take that, that wider racing line yeah. instead. It yeah. takes up with the stock. It doesn't, it doesn't come up. You can't get, you haven't got that power straight out the corner no, to no, get out, no. so you've got to go a bit wide to keep up the momentum. And, and definitely in stock, the, the, the thing, if you watch the really quick guys, you'll see that, like, using very little steering mm. is absolutely the way to scrub tyres. Full size, um, if you guys watch Indianapolis, like that, that, that track there, they're actually full speed the whole track. And the start of the, they've got 30 days of practice because it's such a scary track to get it right. Um, at the start of the event, they put more downforce and they can drive at full speed. But when you understeer, what's happening is your front tyres are like, that, 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 the more lock you put on, the, the grip from the tyres is also actually acting as a brake. And at 240 mile an hour, it's a big brake. So actually at that track, what they do is they continually make the car oversteer or understeer less and less and less until they're almost using no steering angle. And that means that the car actually goes faster. Same in stock. If you're using steering lock, what what you're doing is using the front tire as a brake, and you and you're making it work harder. So if you kind of free it up by using half the steering lock, you find that the car carries more speed. The motor doesn't have to work as hard. They're the sort of things that you can think about when you've got stock. Um, if you guys right, I'll do a couple of demos of just yeah, a couple cool, of techniques, yeah. Yeah. and then we can get back out and practice. I'm sure I've taken up enough time already. That's all right. Okay, so the first thing I'll talk about, um, we mentioned before about tyres and uh, uh, getting the right amount of wheel spin was this, this whole squeezing the throttle on, right? So again, it said if you, if you just mash the throttle, you're going to get wheel spin, but you don't actually get much drive. You've gone past the grip of the tyre. If you don't use enough throttle, you don't get enough weight transfer, there's not enough load on the tyre. As you accelerate with a two-wheel drive, it starts to get more weight on the back. You can accelerate harder, and it will actually accelerate harder. So I'll start by showing you, this is just going to be mashed. So you'll see that the, the car will drive, but it will get a lot of wheel spin, and it doesn't really, it looks spectacular, but it's not actually driving forward that hard. Okay. Especially if I get it out in a bit of a loose stuff like here. See that instead of going forward, it, it like stands up, but it actually starts to drift around. Um, next I'll just, I'll just use, I'll be much smoother on the initial throttle. You see the car takes off, but then it doesn't really go as far, so. That's using maybe 20% power. You see, it, it's still, basically the rate of acceleration was almost exactly the same, yeah? Um, it's just that it then doesn't build up to speed. And same if I go in the loose. It actually, if anything, accelerates better by not using so much power. But the best technique is to kind of keep leaning on the throttle. So when you get it right, and, and I encourage you, especially on a practice day, come down and listen to the car. The tyres make a different sound when they're gripping. Um, when they're sliding, whether they're gripping or whether they're not working, there's a different sound. And sometimes it's good just to get down and have a listen to your car. So this will be like kind of squeezing the throttle. So, so you, you start by... You start by just using a little bit of power. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so as you come out of a corner like this, a little bit of power, and you squeeze it on, and the car leans back, it keeps accelerating, and, it, and you see it all, it's also not sliding around as much. Whereas if I come out of this corner and just mash the throttle, so I'll come out of here and just full speed. You see it instantly gets sideways, and I've had to correct it before it straightens up. So you get the car going, you're squeezing, but you're never kind of letting off the power. You're always continually pulling the power. If you've got a bit too much wheel spin, you kind of just hold the throttle a little bit. Um, if you Sometimes if you've got way too much, you need to let off the car. So I think this corner here, I'll just use this as a bit of a demo. So we're talking about also um, the friction circle of the tyre. If I use the brake on my fuel drive, you'll see that it makes the car turn a lot faster. So I'm going to firstly go through without using any brake, okay? Pretty good. <laughs> There's a little bit of understeer, same with the arc. So this is no brake, the car pushes. If I use some brake, so for this one I'm going to hit the brake and just hold the brake on. The car spins out. So turning and braking, the car spins. If I don't let off the brake, it'll spin all the way around. Whereas using the, the friction circle where we want to brake as we go in and then let the brake off as the car starts to turn. See how the car hooks in, 
but then get through. So I used the brake just as the car was turning in, but once it got to the middle of the corner, off the brake. And we do that right, we can get the car, we can, you basically find that you actually, with a two wheel drive especially, you drive it on the throttle and the brake, you don't drive it on the steering. The steering just kind of guides it, it's actually the throttle and the brake that steers the car. So a little bit of brake. You can get the car to turn and do what you want. Like braking like that there, a little bit of brake comes around. Once it starts to slide, you come off the brake, the rear tire grips and it hooks around the corner. It's a much faster way to drive over there. Um, if you really want the car to like rotate on a dime, so if we take say like this rock here, we can use the we can turn and then hit the brakes and actually flick the car around. So if you hit the brake in the middle of the corner, you actually can make the car like basically almost turn on a dime by hitting the brake as you turn, hit the brake. Once it's pointed where you want to go, you get back on the throttle. This here, you don't need a tractor practice, right? You can set this up in your backyard, on a driveway, set up a couple of witch's hats, a couple of flower pots, whatever you've got lying around, and just practice that, flicking it on the brake and accelerating between. Hit your rate, on the brake. Practice what it's like to rotate the car around. The fancier you can do this fun stuff, the more of the control you'll find you have when you get on the track. But always be thinking about how the tire works, right? Um, the, oh, we'll go to the end of the straight. I'll show you the, the, the little lock versus uh, big lock. We'll do one, a couple of jumps over the triples, then we'll be done, right? So I'll go to the end of the straight. Okay. Yeah, so we'll start by going through the first one. This is just, you'll see how little lock is actually required to get the car through. That's, that's my full lock there. Got a corner like this. See, there's almost no steering. And the car's still getting through quick because you're actually not having to work too hard. If I go through full off this time, yeah. see how the car really dove in and then it scrubbed out wide and then as I finished it, then hooked back in. That's the feeling when you, you see my clock. And also, did you hear the tires working like really? That's, that's scrubbing speed off. So that's what you don't want to be doing. You want to keep the car as fast as possible. So fast corners. So the angle, the angle more inside wheel, inside tire slowing down. So it's not actually working much. Like no, it's, it's, it's both, you're turning it into a brake rather yeah. than into something steering. You know, if you, if you go full lock, like as in 90 degrees, it, you're just turning into a big skid. But this, this is, um, like I think it's, it's one of the things that, again, when you're driving a full-size car, you'd feel that you're doing the wrong thing, right? But with, a, with an RC controller, when you're standing up there and your car's here, it's very easy just to do this. Yeah. <laughs> so really, you know, this is maybe 10% lock. Oh, I missed the turning point there. But yeah, it's maybe 10% lock in these fast corners. And the other thing you hear, as I come down the straight, oops. yeah, um, as I come down the straight, you, you can back off a little bit, but I'm not actually hitting the brakes. I'm just kind of letting the, the drag brake and the, the speed wash off just a little bit. If I hit the brakes, in a fast corner like this, if you're too aggressive on the brake, what tends to happen? is a big spin, right? So you only need to use a little bit of brake, a little bit of steering in these fast corners. Whereas if we go to a, um, one of these slower ones like we were before, you can see I could be a lot more aggressive. Big lock, big brakes, you can really work the car. Does that, dip the, does that tend to force you out? Well, yeah, but yeah. that's still part of it is that if, yeah, you, if, no, you, yeah. if you don't think about the fact your tyres are losing grip and you carry too much speed here. If that was a hump, what I'd be doing is attacking this corner faster, knowing that even if I drift out wide, it's going to pull itself back in. But because it's a drop, you've got to be a little bit more sensible on the way in so that you're lined up ready on the way out. Yeah. Um, last one's the triple jump. We can talk about a couple of the triple jumps. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 but you can also hear when you go too far yeah. because instead of there being like a, a subtle grip, it, it, it turns into like a scratching yeah. sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. It's one of the things actually we talked about in the world, our cars are so yeah. far away, we couldn't hear our cars. Don't get too used to hearing the car on the track, but come down and hear it when you go down and feel what it looks like. Yeah, you can feel the difference. Okay, triple jump. Um, see if we've got enough run up here. <laughs> I guess the first thing I'll talk about, I'll try and see if I do it. I might need to go up on the stand, but basically, 
it's all about getting the line. When you get the line right, the car will clear it, no problems. I'll then do a couple of demonstrations of whipping in the air, where we actually steer in the air. Um, I don't know if I'm going to risk my car by trying to demonstrate a bad jump on this one. <laughs> it's, it's a, there's a pretty big risk. I'll, I'll leave that one to the I think the, the big thing on this one, I'll show you the, the entrance first though. We've come through here. We come here. And we try, see, if I try to get on the power too early, it's still drifting, you're not getting any drive. Okay? So when you've got a big jump like this after the corner, it's really critical. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get some good luck on the yeah. Come around the corner, a little bit more patient. And then you clear it easy. So you hear, there's a difference between when you're impatient, and, and sometimes, again, this is all part of that consciousness, if you, if you get a little bit of a panic feel where you're like, oh, I've got to do this, what tends to happen is you, you, you kind of, you, you tend to overdo your inputs, you tend to go a little bit too aggressive. So if you kind of think, oh, I've got to clear this triple, and you get on the throttle too early, generally you crash. Whereas if you go, right, to clear this triple, I'm going to have to get my car straightened up, carry a lot of speed and be ready for it. Just a little bit of patience, it was the difference between putting the power on here and putting the power on here. And one of them was going to clear it no problem and the other one was going to end up in a big crash. So you've got to kind of, I, I think it's really important to understand what you're doing and not panic about it. As soon as you feel like you're stressed coming up to a jump, that's when you back out. When, when you're stressed, your body... When you're stressed, your body stops reacting, your, brain's, your brain doesn't take in the input properly. Okay, so, so you see for that one though, basically it was about getting the, the car was lined up. Once it was lined up, then just full throttle, the car drove straight, and at about the R was where I let off the power. Okay? Um, so that one there, I didn't have the line up right, and you see how far out it ended up. Okay? Mm. So no matter what I did in the air, that car is still heading out that way. Once the car's in the air, it's going straight. Right, now I've got my eye in. Let's try to show you a little bit of a whip. So for this one, what I'm going to do is steer to the left in the air. Once it's in the air, you'll see that the car will actually turn down to the right and point to the right. So once it did that, see it's actually, when it lands, it's already in the direction. Yeah. Main thing is you've got to let off the steering before you land. That could pop me. Yeah, yeah. No, it's and, and again, that's the problem because then you will go there. Again, if you try to do this consciously, I can guarantee you're going to stuff it up, right? If you practice this in your head and then it starts to happen more naturally, you can actually do it. My reactions aren't good enough to do that. When Foy does, Foy, and Foy's very good at whipping, yeah. he does, so he does a, a, a long one with a whole lot of little ones. Yeah, yeah. So what's that actually to balance the car out or what? Oh, yeah, you can do it to kind of trim the car. Like, as you get better, especially with the full drive, and, and obviously, Andrew, you do a lot of one eight. You use the you use the steering to. There's a couple of things. One is you, you're actually using it to trim the car. It also does actually keep the nose down a bit lower. Um, is there anything else that's in one eight? I found different? it when I was learning how to do it. I just find like a reasonably large jump and go. I go one second left, one second right to get a feel for which way it would dip. Yeah. But I found I got used to doing it off every jump, yeah. just the left right like lock lock, yeah. and it would the car naturally settles straight. Yeah. So you can go left and right, and the car will come straight again. Yeah. That's how I kind of learned how to do it. Okay. But you can with A scale, you got because you got the free wheel, you got a lot more control. Yeah. But the thing with the two wheel drive is that you've actually got really good whipping potential because the front tires are always turning, right? In a four wheel drive, if you've hit the brakes and you've stopped those front tires, it doesn't matter what you do with them. There's no gyro. So that's one thing to be really careful in four wheel is if you've got a panic situation where you need to hit the brakes and, and adjust the car, adjust the car first, then hit the brakes. <laughs> if you've hit the brakes first, you've just got to brake, and it's just going to. Um, actually, what I'll show with this though, this next one, I'll hit the brakes in the air. One of the things you can do with a tool drive is because you can hit the brakes and stop the rear tires, you've got the full, you've got the full gyroscopic effect from the front and nothing from the back. When the rear tires are spinning, they're keeping the car stable. So for this next one, I'll actually hit the brakes and then do the whip, and you'll see it will it will be a lot more. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's really hard for me. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, when I hit the brakes, it, it, it's a much more severe angle. Yeah, yeah. So you actually, again, if you if you're trying to if you want to learn by practicing it, you're going to break the car. I can guarantee it. I have. Um, if you can think about what it's doing and then get up there and then just try and practice those techniques, you'll find it's, you know, you can use it to your advantage. Um, Sometimes yeah. you can actually do it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> one of the things, like the, the, the easiest one to practice in your head is that if the car's starting to like, if, if you've left the jump and you can really feel it over this double jump over there sometimes, sometimes it just leaves at a really strange angle, you turn towards the ground. So if it's if it's like this, you just you just get ready to turn towards the ground and it will straighten itself back up before you land. Um, that's probably the, the first technique to learn. Um, the last one I'll talk about was just that uh, landing on power. So I'll, I'll use the demonstration coming back this way. It's a little bit hard to see on this one. It's not worth dropping it enough. That second double here is a shocker for it. Yeah, okay. Let's, there, yep, let's try that then, mate. Yep, good idea. Oh, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so. This one's got a bit of a steeper pop on it and we're landing onto a flat surface. If we land with no power, you'll, you'll see the back end of the car will actually bounce off, right? If you've got jumps that are really steep and pop the car up, I find that if you don't land on the power, they... You get hungry, you're very hungry. Right, right, you hit it on the very inside, it launches you right up. Yeah, I, I got the line perfect then, first one. <laughs> Good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys, it's not, it's not the best demo, I'm sorry. But yeah, basically just as, just as the car lands, try to get yourself back on the power and you'll see, not only does the car not bottom out, but you see the way it kind of rockets forward. So you, you're gaining some lap time by that. Just as the car lands, you get back on the power. You back shoot the car. And then you're yeah, so the tire, because you've got a lot of a lot of risk as you hit the ground, right? So that one there, you've got the next one's a slow jump because otherwise you overshoot from the roll yeah. over. Yeah, yeah, sometimes on those it's actually you've got to kind of break as you go up the jump. Yeah. I think that the, the main thing is you're really trying to get that line before the jump. Try getting your speed up before you hit the jump and let off the power just a bit earlier, yeah. Um, I don't want to demonstrate, unfortunately this jump, I know if I can try to demonstrate it no time, it's going to I guess that brings me to the end of this session, guys. Um, uh, unless there's any other questions, I mean, I guess the only other thing I can do is maybe if you want, I can go up on the stand and if anyone wants to come up on the stand and just watch a couple of fast laps to, I can talk my way around the track and yeah, then we can just open the practice yeah, back up. Right. Does that sound yeah, right? That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll be okay. busy. Yeah. <laughs> so as I said, the couple of things we're always talking about is slowing around, slowing down at the right point before a corner and exiting tight to a line. So always you'll see we're trying to exit on the line because that's where we can make up the most lap time. Um, sometimes you've got to fight the car on turn in a bit, but you've always got to try to exit as close as possible to the corner. So I'll just do a slow lap first. So yeah, line-wise, we're always... When, whenever I come to a new track, one of the first things you'll see me do is I do a lap at about this speed, and I make sure that I can hit every single pipe, every, the edge of every single section on the track, right? Because sometimes this track's not doesn't have this problem. Some tracks have got big pipes that you, you don't actually know where the edge of the track is until you've actually put your car there. So you try and drive around a slow slow lap, make sure that you can judge, like that corner there, how much can you actually, you know, at what point 
if you've got a big pipe, how much of the wing can I see of my car? They're the sort of things you can start to look for. Again, this stuff costs you nothing, right? And then, yeah, down the back straight. Now we'll Okay, so always we're trying to exit as, as close as we can to the corner. So in these tighter corners, if the car's understeering a bit, I use a little bit of brake to rip it around. And through this section, we want to be as tight as we can all the way through there. Then we can get on the, on the, on the power. Probably a little bit too much air there, which means I didn't get on the back straight properly. Again, trying to be a little bit, you see I can be a little bit cautious exiting that corner there so that it's lined up properly for the triple. And this section is full speed, tightening up. Use the brake to just rip around those hairpins. And you see how tight you can take it all the way through there. And basically, you're trying to make the track as short as you can. Only a little bit of lock. Patient on the power, and then you clear the triple easy. A little bit of left lock in there just to line the car. Yeah. And also, you see how much grip the car's got actually oh, it on is. line? Yeah, yeah. you got whereas grip if, even on this. Yeah, whereas... I'll, for the next lap, I'll just try... I'll show you what happens if you just push a little bit harder, right? So you're always trying to just get that point where the, the tyres are always working. That was terrible. Um, the tyres are always working. If I push hard this lap... Okay, the lock there. You see the car's now unstable. I've pushed out wide. Well, and there's no way I'm going to do the triple. Overshot it. Listen to that wheel spin. <laughs> Even here, push it in wide. Once you've got wide into a corner, you're gone. And if you and if you've missed the exit, like okay, here I'll get miss the exit. Then you you, no matter what you do, you are having to be really really careful on the throttle all the way. So for me, my golden rule is always make ex exit online. Whatever speed you have to do, so you're exiting online is the is the first step. And then work out how fast you can go into the corner so that you're still exiting online. So a little little left whip in the air there. Just lines the car up for the jump. Just enough air to clear that one. I didn't quite get enough. Sometimes slow is fast, isn't it? The old thing. Oh, absolutely. Getting the right groove where you're carrying just the right amount of speed all the way through. Trying to hug as close as you can to all of those lines. And again, always squeezing the throttle. You if you watch the throttle finger, it's never like just mashed. It's, in fact, I'm only full throttle at several like now. So you make the like, scratch got so much grit. <laughs> yeah, but that's online. Often, when you find that you, if you're feeling that a track's got slippery, the first thing to do is slow down, yeah. and you find it's got grip again. When you try when you try to expect more from a track than what it's got, that's when it starts to feel slippery. Yeah. So again, no full throttle here. And then full throttle now. Off. You're going to use full throttle here and Yeah, right. and full throttle now. And then now. So you, you, you don't, just because you've got a lot of power doesn't mean you use it. If you watch the throttle, the throttle finger, it's, it's, it's only using a little bit all the way. So I spend a lot of time trying to work on my speed control and stuff so that it's very easy to be very progressive with it. Straight, so not too wide on the straight because of that um, the loose stuff on the outside. See the patience to wait till you get on the power there, and then always exiting close to the line. When you exit close to the line, you see how the car can really punch forward. So I do whatever I can to make sure my car is is on the right line as I get out of the corner. Well, that's a really tricky thing. And then like there, once when it's pointed straight, see how it can accelerate quite hard in a straight line, but it doesn't um, doesn't get sideways. And the next one, I'll, I'll show you what happens when you just get a little bit too aggressive. Right? Oh, that's what happens when you use a little bit too much. Again, there are curbs there, so you, you can use sections with curbs. A little bit too much. See, see when I got a little bit aggressive there? The cars, instead of, instead of following the curve, it's actually, you can see the tyres expand. If you can see your tyres expanding under acceleration, that usually means you've hit the power too hard. You want the car, you want the tyres to be gripping, but not expanding. Again, so in terms of power, patience is the key, especially in two-wheel drive. I've got a heap, this is a 7.5 Rudy, you know, with a brand new silicon graphene batteries. This thing's got heaps of power. But when you drive it right, you, you're actually hardly getting any wheel spin anywhere and you're getting the most grip out of the tyre. 
Oh, hopefully that's been of interest to you guys. Mm. No worries, good. Mm. Uh, no, that's a shorty, but I've got 80 grams under them. So it's the same weight as a set of saddles. The same, uh, 86, 70, sorry. It's the same as a saddle. Yeah, smooth. Think about where you're putting the power down. Think about trying to get out on the line all the time. Think about your tyres using the grip out of the tyre. You see that when you get the line right in these sort of corners, how much grip there is. Fast lap times are always when you just feel like you just cruise the car around. And you're not really, it's, you, you're not... Well, oof, just... Yeah. <laughs> so, Ray, did you say 70 grams? Seven, 70 grams, under the Seven back. zero. Yep. So the way it's same weight, saddle pack. Yep. See there, when I got a little bit wide, you've got to then be a bit patient on yourself. If you've missed the line on turn in, you, you, you've got to wash the speed off. So. Mm. Again, when you get, when you get a, even even if a track's got a really wide line, you'll still generally find that when you're driving as close as possible and as smooth as possible to the inside, your car's generating grip. That car looks like it's got a heap of grip, right? Well, those tyres are half worn. Um, you know, it's not like it's got anything different to anyone else here. That's the control tyre. Sorry, there, there, there are webs on the front. I've got webs on the front, but so you'll see, you know, webs when they get out in the dust have got no steering. You shouldn't be out in the dust, so it doesn't matter. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, yeah. No, but but this is what when what what I really learned when we've done some of these coaching when we put the cones on the exit of the corner. Most people, the problem is actually overshooting into the corner. I, I never get run into on the exit of a corner. When I lap, I'm always getting run into on the way into a corner. Yeah. That's And you'll, you'll find the same with the, the, the difference that the faster guys are generally actually, they break more and they're slower into a corner, but it's so they get out of the corner fast. Slow in faster. Yeah, sl absolutely. But it, it's, it means that you're working the car better. It's not, a, it's not like kind of a, you know, a, a conservative way to drive. It's actually the fast way to drive. When you watch the Mayfields and those guys, man, they are super quick out of the corner, but they are never off the line into the corner. All right. Yeah, anyway, I don't want to hold up any more time. I know I've uh, taken a, probably, oh, no, probably too much, but yeah. No, that's very good. No. That's very good. Thank you. All right, guys, yeah, and look, I'm around obviously all afternoon. If you've got any issues, you probably notice I didn't talk about setup once. Um, because it's actually not the critical thing, right? Most people get your driving right, and then the setup, you can start to feel the setup. When you know what you're looking for, you'll then start to feel, hang on, that car is pushing where I don't want it to be. Every time I'm taking the right line and it's still sliding out, that's when you can then start to change the setup. And then I'm more than happy to talk about that talk out. That's when I mean 90% of the tyres. Driving to your tyres is, I think, that's the bit that, that I try to talk a little bit more about in these sessions and probably you find in most of the um, stuff online because actually there, there is theory to it and if you don't drive to the tyre you can't work out why sometimes you're quick and sometimes you're not. Whenever I go to a controlled tyre track that's the first thing I'm trying to find out is what is this tyre doing? Does the tyre like when I'm on a warm-up lap for instance like I'll come out of a corner like this and um, you'll, you'll, you'll sometimes see, you'll come out of a corner like this and we will lean on the car a lot harder. What you're trying to find is, you know, I'll, I'll spend the first lap for you. How, how hard can I actually lean on this tyre? Like, out of, between a corner like this, you know, can I, can I really lean on it? It's not necessarily the fastest way to go, but you, you're trying to find in that warm-up lap how much, you know, what, what, what is the, the track and the tyre feeling like right now? Personally, I love that wedge because they, they give you a lot of steering online, which is where you need it. And if you've gone offline, well, they'll push a little bit, but they won't hook around. Okay. But they're so much better online, and they, they, they really seem to suit this car. Um, I've got barcodes uh, for the front. If it's a little bit dustier than barcodes seem to work all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I find that dirt web, when, when the track's good, the dirt web and the associated, they just go together perfectly. Um, not all the brands are the same. For some reason, the dirt web and the associated works unbelievably well. If anyone wants to have a drive, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll I'll, 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 I'll look bad. There's usually two words that make me say when I drive this car. It's very smooth on the... Yeah, it's the one. Smooth and responsive. It's, it's very responsive. They're the two words, right? So I'm more than happy if people have a drive. This is what a well set up car should feel like, right? It shouldn't be hard to drive. That's already. A fast it's car. It's very... Uh, it's got <laughs> it hasn't got any... Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
The main thing is that it. This is break money. It's got no power in the first initial Sorry? It's got no power in the first initial Chris, would you flip Ray's car back up? It's got a very it? oh. transmitter. It's also got a very long throttle trigger. Yeah. But it's all about you want to be able to feel yeah. your way through this. I, I want to be able to control that wheel spin so that like, you feel you see between those corners. I want to be I want to be able to feel it so that I can actually feel the tyre starting to accelerate. That's that's what you want to be feeling. Right? I mean, if you really want to see some of that stuff, put like a black line or something on your tyre so you can see how fast it's turning. But... Yeah. Yeah.